Um, but one of the things that I'm really excited about uh, that Black Brand is doing is the cash mob. Uh, we'll be cash mobbing a Black own business um, where everybody commits to spending at least $20 and one day in two hours we mob their store and their website uh, to purchase their goods and services. Uh, for the cash mob, uh, it not only helps raise awareness for black businesses, but is just really a good payday for whatever business we're cash mobbing that day. And it's real. When I say reach out to me, you can go to the Black Brand website, go to contact us and say, hey, I want to talk to Brian. All I want to do is continue to empower the community through group economics. This is the fight of our time. The fight of my parents and my grandparents were, you know, sitting at the diner, making sure that the laws aren't blatantly against you in a very explicit way. The fight of our generation is economic empowerment. This is something that Malcolm X was strong on, especially near the end. This is something that Martin Luther King spoke about a lot, especially near the end of his life. Uh, economic empowerment is our civil rights issue. What we're doing here by helping Black businesses, by putting resources in our community, this is our marching in the streets. This is our sit-in. This is our March on Washington. If anything I'm saying connects with anybody out there, please go to blackbrand.biz or just call me directly. I'm here for the community. Yo, that's dope. <laughs> that's dope. That, that's dope. And I, I'm glad you just brought up, you know, Dr. King. Uh, you know, recently we celebrated Dr. King, you know, nationwide. And one of the things that I think is interesting is in 63, he gave the, you know, the extemporaneous talk, which became known as the I Have a Dream speech, you know. But four years later, in 1967, he said, my dream has become a nightmare. We were overly simplistic. We were too ambitious. And, you know, he was saying that we shouldn't get wrapped up into that portion. We should really get focused on the practical and economic things. And it's, it's interesting to me that when Dr. King started speaking about economics and war, war and economics, and, you know, war is profitable. <laughs> <laughs> and he was talking about the the boycotting of Christmas spending. Then he was killed. Yeah. Yep. I refuse to believe that is a coincidence. Yo, well, I remember mean, the then night he before was killed. he was talking about collective bargaining in Memphis. Absolutely. Right. He was talking about collective bargaining with businesses, and near the end, he also spoke about um, you know making sure that. The U.S. government supports black economic empowerment the way that they supported white economic empowerment since 1776 is the very establishment of America, how the government undergirded its poor white peasants with education and land grants and tools to work land. Mm -hmm. The same way that they undergirded their their poor white citizens. Once again, Dr. King's message was equality. But that's equality across the board. If they got education, we need education. If they got land grants, we need land grants. If they get tools to work it, we need tools to work it. So this economic empowerment, I say it's the fight of our time, but really it comes uh from before us and i'm just so pleased to be a part of this fight um growing up in my teenage years one of my one of my heroes was fred hampton <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's also your uh, chess.com handle that is also my <laughs> chess.com handle come see me on chess.com by the way i wow. want all the smoke <laughs> Word. Hey, look, I didn't, I didn't have a lot of time, but I wanted to pop in and say thank you, Brian, for everything that you're doing, and you know, salute to good brother Conrad, and also wanted to show off my Hampton University shirt. Salute to the Pirates, <laughs> new CAA oh. member. Yep, I support black colleges <laughs> and universities all day. Mm. About it, about it. 